Hi there. I'm here to talk to you right now about what happens when we connect capacitors into a parallel AC circuit. So our general parallel circuit rules still apply. The voltage of our source is the same as the voltage here, it's the same as the voltage here, and the same in the voltage down here. We also see the same rule for current apply where all of the currents added up are going to equal the total current. What's different now is we're dealing with a different physical property, which is capacitance. So capacitance, we know, is affected by the dielectric constant, the area of the plates, and the distance between the plates. So what we kind of see happening in parallel is we see almost the area of the plates increasing. You know, we've got all of our one set of plates and our other set of plates. So we actually see capacitance add up directly in parallel add more capacitors in parallel, our capacitance increases. So we get a kind of a new little formula going. We can say our capacitance total is equal to capacitance of capacitor 1 plus capacitance of capacitor 2 plus the capacitance of capacitor 3. CT, C1 plus C2 plus C3. So in this case here, in this question, we could take up our capacitances, 50 microfarads plus 60 microfarads plus 70 microfarads, leave them all in microfarads, and that's going to give us an answer also in those microfarads. So what we see here, so we see CT equals 100 and 80 microfarads. Perfect. Well, now what we have, we have an alternating current, AC, in this case 240 volts, running at 50 hertz, frequency of 50 hertz, we're going to see that capacitive reactance. Capacitive reactance is caused by uh, the frequency and the capacitance in this circuit. We have a couple things going on. Because we are talking capacitive reactance, we're going to have a capacitive reactance in each one of these branches, or each one of these branches is going to have their very own opposition to current flow. Of course, like everything else, we have a formula, and we use this formula a lot. So we're going to use the formula of xc equals 1 over 2 pi fc. Not a new formula. We've been using it a lot. Um, well, if we are looking for the capacitor or the capacitive reactance in branch 1, we'll use the capacitance of branch 1. So we go, okay, xc1 is 1 divided by 2 times pi times 50 hertz times 50 microfarads or 0 0.00005 farads. It ends up giving us a capacitive reactance of 63.662 ohms. We keep going down the line, we do the same thing. We get 53.012 ohms and 45.473 ohms. So we can do that in each branch. We can figure out XC1, XC2, this would be XC1, XC2, and XC3. Having that information would allow us to go further and figure out the current flowing in branch one, knowing the voltage and the opposition to current flow, if we wanted to do so, at the end of the day, letting us to figure out the current total. But what I want to look at is how we do figure out our XC total. Well, we know it's measured in ohms. We also know, like inductive reactance and resistance, capacitive reactance is going to be added inversely for ohms. So we see a formula. Of course, we get 1 over XCT equals 1 over x c1 plus 1 over x c2 plus 1 over x c3. So we can do the inverse calculations, type it into our calculator. At the end of the day, we are expecting a number smaller than each of the individual branches, and we get around 17.7 ohms. At this point, I like to double check my work, make sure I did everything okay. I'm going to do one other little thing. I'm going to take this formula of xc equals 1 over 2 pi fc, and I'm actually going to go xc total equals 1 divided by 2 
times pi times 50, which is my frequency, times 0 0.0001. 80, which is my capacitance in farads. That's also going to give me a number pretty close to 17.7 ohms. So now I've done something right. Um, thanks a lot for watching. That's all I have to talk about today on capacitance and capacitive reactants in a parallel circuit.